Hello again. A new project for today and uh, very useful in the same time. Uh, I'm going to try to build a bias T for this little guy here, you know. This is a 5189 amplifier, the one uh, you already saw it on, uh, on my uh, other videos, you know, it's working great. But I think it's time to have it near the antenna and let's build a bias T. So, let's start with what's a bias T. The bias T, it's a kind of decoupler. So, it's dividing the signals, you know, the RF signals, apart from the DC power line. So, we can use the same line for uh, supplying or powering the amplifier. And uh, the schematic, it's very simple. Let's consider an amplifier. This is the antenna up there, the ground, the output, of course, and there we need the plus power for the device, of course. And there we have the minor or the receiver, it can be a radio as well. And also we have the shield over there. The shield goes to the ground. So basically we have two wires. No, we have the ground and we have the middle wire. We can fit the DC by the middle wire to the amplifier. How can we do that? It's a very simple way. First, we have to check the amplifier with an ohm meter, a resistance meter. Because when we measure the output to the ground, related to the ground, we have to have infinite resistance over there. That means we have a capacitor out. In case there is a resistor in between output and the ground, then we can't use the bias D or maybe limited current. So the amplifier needs to be decoupled by capacitors or isolated from the ground. Let's say the output, it have to be infinite resistance. Okay, let's, uh, let's Try that with my Kwitz uh, multimeter, 601 there, uh, it's on ohm meter. And let's measure, let's measure the output of this little amplifier. There is ground and the middle output pin. So that's infinite. We got no resistance. We already have a capacitor on the output of this amplifier. And the rest of the things, they are very intuitive, if we take it that way. Okay, so let's say the line is going to the minor. And somewhere near the minor input, or the radio input, we can build a very simple device. That one contains a coil. And of course, at the end of the coil, we'll supply the voltage. It can be plus 5 volts, 12, doesn't matter how much you need for the amplifier. So you see, that's why it's called a bias T, because the coil is a kind of T letter with the antenna cable. So plus voltage will go evidently to the middle wire. And of course, the ground will be the shield in our case. We can transport DC, we can supply DC to the amplifier. It's a very easy way. The DC is not going to the amplifier because we have the capacitor. Of course, it's not going to the output of the amplifier. And there we have another coil blocking the RF signals from the middle of the cable to the plus pin of the amplifier. I mean, in our case, the plus connection of the amplifier. If you take a chip, it will be the plus. You see, and the RF signal is going nice and easy to the cable, and the DC in the same time, it's going through the coils and it's powering the amplifier. You see, the things are getting a little bit different. If we don't have a capacitor here at this input, then we have a kind of resistance to the ground. In this case, we'll add a capacitor before the radio or the minor. And the bias T will look something like this. We have the amplifier, we have the line, of course. We have the first capacitor here, then we have the coil. 
going to plus and then we have a second capacitor going into the minor or radio. Uh, we have to be sure that here in the middle we'll have infinite resistance. So the bias T will look like that. Let's say two capacitor, coil to plus and another capacitor to the output. Input, output. How we can measure that? This is very simple. Just grab your multimeter on ohm meters and uh, let me see here I have my radio okay let's go to ohm meter huh? and ground and middle pin and here we have 1.2 1.3 kilo ohms. You know why? Because this one is already bias ready. I mean, it can supply voltage to the amplifier. So, if we have a zero here or something like a few ohms in the middle pin, then we have to add this capacitor here. In uh, my situation, having a Caltech Miner and uh, ZPF amplifier. We have a capacitor here and I have another capacitor to the minor input like in the schematic. Very simple. All we need is just a capacitor and two coils. And uh, what's fun about, doesn't really have to be professional coils. Okay, so let's start building the things. You see I'm using a piece of PCB but it's not really necessary, you can do that straight on the connectors and uh, I found this much more easier to do uh, that's an RPSMA and we have the middle pin isolated from the ground obviously now we have to build the coils we can use any coil, you know, it's not such a big problem because we can build them. We just can build them from a piece of cat-free cable. Like I said, we don't need any fancy stuff to do that. We can use this kind of wire. Let's cut a piece of that wire and just build the coil. It's not a critical number of uh, turns. That should be enough. That should be enough to block the RF. That's an inductor. There we go. That's a coil. Let me have another one. Because we need two of them. One to the amplifier and the other one to the bias T. Yep. Like that. So now we have two inductors. So let's get uh, our friend here. First, we'll take uh, out the wires. And uh, of course, I'll keep the diode on. We don't need those wires anymore. I'm still keeping the diode in place because that's a kind of protection in case I have the wrong polarity. This amplifier, it's very sensitive about wrong polarity i mean it's burning simply said <laughs> so in this case the plus will be delivered through the diode to the plus connection of the amplifier and the shield or the minus in our case will be supplied very nice through the shield of the antenna cable the rf signal is going untouched to the same antenna cable because we have that capacitor and uh, what we have to do now is to connect one of the one of the ends of the coil to the middle pin there that's the output if you remember we just checked that with an ohm meter so we have an infinite resistance there it's uh, safe to supply DC and the other 
end of the coil is going to the diode supplying the voltage to the amplifier. Of course it will be isolated later. Okay, now let's turn to the, uh, to the bias T itself. I'm using a little piece of PCB and two RP SMA connectors, but you can do that very easy just uh, with connectors or any other kind of uh, you know, arrangement. But I found using a PCB it's much easier and much solid way to do that. Unfortunately, I don't have the right connector, so I have to improvise. So I'm taking the middle pin from an RP SMA female to a male. <laughs> okay, like I told you so many times, you know, improvisation is the mother of creation. That's right. And now we have an RP SMA male. Let's solder that down. So now the connectors are soldered together. The middle pins are getting one to another. Let's check for short the middle trace with the ground. And it's perfect. No short there. And of course, connection to the middle pin. Now all we have to do here is to connect the coil between the middle pin or the middle trace to a piece of the PCB that will cut it or carve it to have a kind of island and there will be our plus connection. I should do that before, but like I said, I'm just improvising. The, the main uh, goal here is to show you how easy you can do it yourself just a little skills and a few minutes of working let's uh, let's disconnect that area somehow from the ground yes done let's check uh, if it's uh, okay if it's not short of ground no everything is fine there so that will be our main plus connector so it's time to have the coil in place. One of the one of the ends is going to the middle pin, just like that. Okay. And the other one goes to the Let's call it island, <laughs> you know, isolated area like that. Too much temperature. That's nice about TS-100. You can have a really nice and steady temperature. Okay, we are done. So that will be our plus. Nice and steady. And of course now we have to uh, have our wires connecting to the power supply. So I'm going to have uh, the white one to the ground and the brown one, it will be plus. Okay, nice ground and the other one to plus. And now I can say the bias T is ready to go. It's done. Let's have a test. Let me connect it to the amplifier. All right, so this will go to the output of the amplifier like that. And now we should apply five volts from the battery through that piece of wire through the USB, but nothing happens. Something wrong there. Let's check the power supply. Let's check the voltage. Okay, so it's exactly the other way. So we have to reverse the the wires. You see, that's why a diode it's very good because it protects the amplifier. It's really protected. You know, and this is funny because usually red it's plus and black it's minus. Not for this cable, this particular USB cable. It's exactly the other way. The black it's plus and red it's ground. Okay, now 
When we apply 5 volts there, ba -bam, that's it. We got power to the amplifier. Of course, the next step is to have a real piece of cable, antenna cable, and to simulate somehow a bias the powering through the feed line to the antenna cable. Let me have some connectors ready to go. That's an RP SMA female and a piece of RG58 for this test. Of course, it's not the right connector for this kind of kind uh, for of course, it's not the right connector for this kind of cable, but the point is that I just want to show you the way the things are running. So we need to uncover the middle wire that will be the plus and the signal wire in the same time. Let's uh, solder that to the connector. Of course, always flux and ground to the metal to the metal part of the connector. Okay, so one side it's done. I'm gonna use the same kind of connectors the other side because I don't have any other ones for now. But uh, that doesn't really matter. The bias is doing the job anyway. Shield out. That's what I have in the house now. There, G58. But of course, it can be any other kind of cable, uh, even TV cable. It is the same principle to to all the cables. Okay, so the middle pin. It's, I mean, the middle wire. It's uh, ready to be soldered. Let me have a connector. Does it fit? Yes, of course. Middle wire goes to the center pin or the, yeah, the middle pin there. And obviously the shield will go to the metallic side of the connector. Okay, that's done. Okay, then we got the amplifier to the other side of the cable. Here we are connecting the bias T. Okay, like that. The other side of the bias T obviously goes to the binder or to the radio. And uh, now if we apply the power to those two wires through the bias T, of course, we should see the LED lightning. Okay. Ready? Let's go. And that's it, people. We have a working bias T. Very nice and simple. Everything is fine, and that's the way the things are running. Okay, I think it's very clear. It's very easy to do that. It's cheap. You don't need any fancy capacitor coils, just simple pieces of wire and connectors. That's it for today and I hope it's useful. If you have any question, don't hesitate. Just write them down. I'll do my best to answer. And of course, please like, push the button there, subscribe too. You can help me growing up the channel. And uh, until the next time, of course, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye. <laughs>